Washington, very high on their list of best guitarists of all time. His new group, Prophets of Rage, will soon begin its 35-city Make America Rage Again tour. Tom Morello! <laughs> Mr. Rager, how are you? What's up? Okay. Tom Morello. Yes, now, sir. What does your hat say? Make, Make America, America yeah. Rage Again. Okay. Yeah. I, I have one that somebody said says, Make America High Again with it. <laughs> Hotly. Well, there's a lot of hats. Yeah, in the, yeah there's a lot of upcoming year, I imagine. So uh, the new group is called what is it called? Prophets of Rage. Okay. Yes. So now, Rage is always in your title. That's correct. That's correct. But this group is <laughs> myself and Tim and Brad from Rage Against the Machine, Chuck D and DJ Lord from the Mighty Public Enemy. Super group. And Be Real from Cypress Hill. Wow. Uh, and one of the reasons one of the reasons why we formed now was because uh, the media has both referred to the Trump campaign and the Sanders campaign constantly as raging against the machine. Right. We came to set the record straight, what it really means yes. to rage against the machine. We're embarking on a 35-city tour. The first stop is at the Republican National Convention. Um, and one of, the th one, of the things that we've, one of the things that we've raged against in our entire career is economic inequality. So we wanted to make sure that ev there was no economic barrier to coming to the show. Tickets start at $20, and we give away a part portion of the proceeds to homeless charities in each city. Okay. Um, you know, Paul Ryan is a fan of Rage Against the Machine. Paul Ryan is a fan of Rage Against the Machine. Hitler was a vegan. What's your point? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no uh, lit, there's no litmus test for people no, being know, fans, fans of music. And he, uh, What he, would you do if Trump... He's, used... he's, he's got the PX90 workout going to Rage Against the Machine. He's not really listening to right, the lyrics, is my what, Yeah, uh, that's probably right. Yeah, yeah. What would you do if Trump started to use one of your songs at his rallies? Because that happens a lot. I'm surprised there. he hasn't. Talk, surprised right. he hasn't <laughs> on, on the one hand, I'd be afraid of sort of fueling the media by saying anything about it. But on the other hand, I would go choke his ass out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Now, I mean, you're, you're, you've always been very political. Uh, it seems like you would be a Bernie person, but you, were, you did not endorse either. No, I didn't. I mean, I, while I admire the fact that he's tried to hijack the corporate Democratic Party and make it a people's Democratic Party, right. my, that, that's, that's one strategy. It's a fine strategy, and that may or may not work. My strategy is pitchforks and torches and drive them all into the sea. That's <laughs> But then who would run shit? But then who would yeah. run shit? Well, I mean, let's all just promise to be cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. But you're not an anarchist. Don't tell me that. Have you, where have you been, Bill? I mean, that's like, I mean, I, I've... Not a real anarchist. Well, I mean, it's my, one thing to sing a song. It's one thing to sing a song. you know anarchy would be worse. You've seen The Purge. I was, I was uh, the scheduling secretary for U.S. Senator Cranston right. for two years. So I got to see how the political sausage is made on the killing floor. That, and it is... Absolutely, you know, it, it cured me of any desire to it's, be for the Democratic or Republican parties. I think the, I think the, pro the deeper problems are systemic, and speaking up against those problems in your vocation, whether you're a talk show host or a guitar player, I think is the important thing. Well, but somebody's uh, <laughs> as imperfect as they are. Somebody has to make the sausages because mm. people have to eat. Yeah. Then people, someone has to make the sausages, but, but I think that to cast your ballot into the void every four years and hope that someone's going to wave a magic wand and make the country to your liking well, is not the way that progressive, radical, or revolutionary change happens. It always well, comes from below. It, we, and in, and when, in my music, and in our music at Prophets of Rage, we, that's the demographic that we speak okay. to. Okay. Yeah. You know, as Churchill said, democracy, the worst system except for all the others. <laughs> well, as Martin Luther as Martin Luther King said, there's no hotter place in hell than for people who stand on the sidelines during time of moral conflict. This is the time of moral conflict, and it's time to get off the sidelines, not just to cast a ballot, but to fight to get the wheel of history in your hands. All right, let me ask you something personal. Uh, you... Uh, Muhammad Ali, we saw his yeah. funeral today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you met him on a plane. I did. I, heard I did. When you were a kid. I did. I was nine years old, and I was flying <laughs> uh, an Air Jamaica flight from Kingston to Chicago, and over the PA system. An Air Jamaica. Air Jamaica flight. flight. I was in Jamaica. They don't even need a plane. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and over the over the intercom came a voice that sounded very much like Muhammad Ali, and that voice said, "My, I'm Muhammad Ali, and I'm flying this airplane. But don't worry, because I'm the greatest at flying airplanes too." <laughs> And I'm confident that all of you want my autograph, so I'm going to come down the aisle and sign all your stuff. And he did. I still have my Air Jamaica ticket. Wow. Yeah. 
Well, you know, he, he was the first to do that. <clears throat> I, I have to tell you, I was a, a pretty young kid when he became champion, mm. but I was just aware enough to know that what he was doing, the bragging on yeah. the greatest stuff, was completely revolutionary. And for everybody who's younger, who grew up in a world with hip hop, mm. Mm. where braggadocio was a big part of life, yeah. you know, I used to say, uh, you know, uh, rap is affirmative action for the ego. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Muhammad Ali invented hip hop. Yeah. That probably would not ex have existed without him. That's quite possible. I mean, he certainly did it first. Yeah. Well, as a as while 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 his while his bragging may have gotten my attention, what I was attracted to Muhammad Ali was how he uses vocation to inflict his worldview on on the right. public and it was unapologetic and there's been a little bit of a, sort of a in the same way with Nelson Mandela a whitewashing of who Muhammad Ali was he was a person who said you may not like my religion but it's my religion you may not like the color of my skin or my opinions but I'm just as American as you are and the powers that he can shove it because I'm the champion the champion of the world and I'm the people's champion and that's the thing as a kid made me think in my vocation I can express my opinion in a way that is unapologetic as well okay um